Over 300 properties have already been cleared in Lahaina, and over 75 homes have been given the okay to start rebuilding. A meeting with residents is scheduled for early April. But as survivors get ready to rebuild, nature has already started healing. Nikki Shenfield explains. In the midst of devastation, life is growing in Lahaina. The area near File 5, you know, Mokuula and all of that, I've never seen it that green. Hawaiian royalty lived in Mokuula. 505, Salvation Army, and Wyola Church did not survive the fire. But the cemetery, where kings and queens were laid to rest, survived, along with the surrounding trees. The historic ulu tree at Wyola burned, but... But 84 feet away from that tree are its own keiki coming up out of the ground. And that tree is within... 30 feet of Moka'ula. So it's being charged by the water that's right there, and that's causing that tree to send up all these sprouts. Dwayne Sparkman founded Tree Covery Lahaina and is the County Arborist Committee Chairman. Blake and his friend Zane volunteered to help him earlier this month. When you walk around that area right now, like you touch the soil, and this is before the rain and all of that, it's moist. There's plants and species in there that shouldn't be growing. If the groundwater below has flooded 505 parking garage before, but with the pump shut off and no one using the water, nature is able to reclaim itself. Uh, they pumped out 1 million gallons and within 24 hours, 1 million gallons came back. So it's refilling very quick, um, all the way up to the prison walls, all the way, you know, half a mile from the ocean. We're seeing uh, bog grasses called nutgrass grow in areas where we haven't had enough rain to support this. Sparkman says it's imperative to keep the water there or find ways to use less potable water and plant more native plants. Even like the banyan tree, it's tapped into that water source and it's pulling water from right there also. He says invasive fan palms will be removed from Malu'ulu Olele Park and ulu trees and coastal sandalwood will be placed there instead. Nearly all the plumeria trees died in the fire. He estimates 90% of mango trees and 70% of the monkey pods are gone too. I think there's only about 700 to 1,000 trees left in Lahaina right now out of 25,000 trees. He says it's important to get soil testing done because there are red flags surrounding the trees that survived. There's something toxic to the fruit down there because the birds won't even eat the popola berries. They're not eating the, the bananas. They're not eating any of the papayas nor the uh, um, tomatoes or the lily koi's. He says no one should eat any fruits from Lahaina trees for at least two years. His team, relying on donations, waters the surviving trees, but he hopes the future Lahaina will be able to rely on the water below. I'm like surrounded by, you know, burnt buildings and places that I grew up going to and all that, but then this little beacon of hope right there just like, I almost felt weird smiling, but then it just, I don't know, I just, I got so motivated. I was like, yeah, this is what we got to put our time into. We're fighting to rebuild Lahaina better than it was, so we never find ourselves in this position again. To find out how you can help Tree Recovery Lahaina, go to our website, khon2.com. Nikki Schoenfeld, KHON2 News, working for Hawaii.